Good morning, everyone. Here's Adam. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Good. Good. Although I'm not at a spot where I have, uh, I'm at Starbucks again. It's the only tables that have um, a plug. Okay. So I can plug my computer in are taken. So I don't think I can do, I can't do read back. Okay, no my, worries. I don't have my battery for my writer either, so I can't see my screen. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, no worries. No worries. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started. Yeah, when it's the read back and I start to, you know, well, you can still participate if you want, but then I just won't. <laughs> if you're the only one here, then I'll just uh, call it a day because the other students that watch it, watch the recorded can go back and look at their own notes. Right. Yeah. So, read all right. Respect. Yeah, all right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started then. Here we go. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with some words. These are, um, let's see, what do they call these words? The most picturable words. Here we go. Oven, ring, sponge, ticket, parcel, rod, spoon, toe. Pen, roof, spring, tongue. Pencil, root, square, tooth. Picture, sale, stamp, town. Pig, school, star, train. Pen, scissors, station, tray. Pipe, screw, stem, tree. Plain, seed, stick, trousers. Plate, Sheep, stocking, umbrella, plow, shelf, stomach, wall, pocket, ship, store, watch, pot, shirt, street, wheel, potato, shoe, sun, whip, prison, skin, table, whistle, pump, skirt, tail, window, rail, snake, Thread, wing, rat, sock, throat, wire, receipt, spade, thumb, worm. Now here are some common English verbs. Accept, be, clean, copy. Account, beat, clear, correct. Achieve, become, climb, cost. Act, begin, close could, add, believe, collect, count, admit, belong, come, cover, affect, break, commit, create, afford, build, compare, cross, agree, burn, complain, cry, aim, buy, complete, cut, allow, call, concern, damage, Answer, can, confirm, dance, appear, care, connect, deal, apply, carry, consider, decide, argue, catch, consist, deliver, arrange, cause, contact, demand, arrive, change, contain, deny, ask, charge, continue, depend, Attack, check, contribute, describe, avoid, choose, control, design, base, claim, cook, destroy. All right. Let me just uh, date those. And there are plenty more that we'll cover in the next class. So here are some common phrases. Okay, here we go. I didn't have, I didn't imagine, I didn't know, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say, I didn't recall, I didn't recollect, I didn't remember, I didn't ask, I didn't say, I didn't think, I didn't think so. I didn't understand, I didn't want, I don't ever, I do not, 
want, I do not, I don't believe, I don't believe so, I don't feel, I don't go, I don't have, I don't imagine, I don't know, I don't mean, I don't mean to, I don't mean to say, I don't recall, I don't recollect, I don't remember, I don't say, I don't think, I don't think so, I don't understand, I don't want, I don't feel, I feel, I felt, I have, I have been, I have believed, I have had, I recall, I recalled, I remember, I remembered, I should, I understand, I want, I wanted, I was, I would. All right. Now I've got some consonant compounds. These focus on final RT, final RG, final RKS. Did they start the first part of the evening with a concert? The art mart is near the court. He was curt and short. The port is north of the fort. The dart landed near her heart. Bert played in the dirt. Sal was alert and pert. The wiring is tearing and wearing away. Hiring and firing is a difficult task. Sherry was preparing the meal and sharing the news. Al was daring before entering the arena. The catering company is barring, barring the door. The ordering department is hindering our progress. The dog barks when Cal parks the car. We found two corks and three forks. He marks the merchandise when he works. May irks Brian when she shirks responsibility. When the coffee perks, he jerks the plug. The fox lurks near the larks, not far from the Ozarks. It's like, who comes up with all of these sentences? Somebody gets paid to do it, you know? You have to be pretty, uh, pretty crafty there. All right. Now, this is a word, or a, excuse me, a number drill. It's in a paragraph form, um, but it, it's uh, focusing on check numbers and dates, okay? Here we go. My check register listed check number 305 for $28.45, written on 11304, check number 306 for $173.43, Written on 112514, check number 307 for $82. Written on 12715, check number 308 for $25. Written on 122416, and check number 309 for $63.29. Written on 1117, totaling $372.16 for the five checks written within a three-year period. All right. Yeah, you need me? Oh, yes. Sorry, Jill. I had a student that was having an issue. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> so when they uh, do dates like that, should we yes. put in like a forward slash between all those um, the numbers? Yeah, I would, are you talking about when you go to transcribe or when you're writing them? Both. Okay, so when you're writing them, I like to just write oi. Like, I, I do oi. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah, then, that actually translates as um, a forward slash in my okay, in the software. Yep, that's exactly what you would do. Okay. You know, this one has a dash. So it's one of those things that when you go to transcribe, you could do a dash or a forward slash. Oh, okay. Yeah, either one works. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. More of a forward slash guy myself. Yeah, yep. Exactly. And that's exactly what I do. So this person chose to do the cool. dashes, but yeah, either works. I just saw, um, huh, I just saw a little note there. Did, did you have an okay time get, getting in your connection? Me? Yeah, when you got in. Um, yeah, I was in like waiting. 
free to. Okay. Because I, I was a, having an issue connecting, just testing things. Oh, yeah, that wasn't me. That was okay. Okay. Yeah, I had an issue uh, getting in this morning. I had to get back out and back in. So. I um. I mean, I did the wrong one. I went to like three different, like all three different times before I realized, oh yeah, it's like, it's mid speed today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wrong speed. I've done that oh, before high speed. too. We're all going to like low speeds and then realize, oh, it's mid speeds today. Yeah. I've Why's no that. one here? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we had our, um, we had our internet guy come out the other day and uh, I was wondering if that was why, because he was doing some stuff for my husband. Um, the connection so I didn't know if that was what was the uh, kind of causing the hold up but I got in so sometimes if I nice. shut everything off and sh come back on it, it then it I don't know the connection's good so for whatever reason I, I'm showing a good connection now so I just wondered why yeah. it's not in here yet. Hmm. Okay. where are you where are you located I'm in uh, Marietta which is close to Temecula uh-huh you know where that is yeah yeah okay don't you live, do you still live in the mountains? No. No? No. We used to live in the mountains a long time ago. Like, you live in Marietta? Oh, yeah. We've been in Marietta for... Oh, nice. Well, since we came back, we used to live in Oregon, and then we moved back mm -hmm. to Marietta about, it's been about five years now. So are you in so are you, Um, I'm in Highland right Highland. now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are you, are you just doing this from home? Yes. Nice. Yes. Isn't that nice? Awesome. Yes. I saw on um on Facebook Facebook Marketplace they were giving away and selling all the desks and everything from Sage College uh mm -hmm. recently, like a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah, everything that's in there, desks, chairs, you know, all the office supplies and like things that you know, organizers and stuff. Wow. Where did yeah, you purging. That? Facebook marketplace. Wow. Somebody was like, Yeah. That's interesting. Oh, that's sad. I know. I was like, that's Sage. And then it was like, it went through all the pictures, you know, it went to like the green wall with like the words on the walls and stuff. I was like, that's definitely Sage. It was like Robert's desk. They're selling for like a hundred bucks. And then like um, all the like really big like desks and um, the big nice setups. There were like two of them. Wow. I was like, oh, that one was Robert's. That's sad. Oh. That's really, oh gosh. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm shocked. That's amazing that you saw it. You came across that, you know? I know. Yeah. There was like two separate posts. Wow. Wow. Well, I'm sure it, that'll be gone before you know it. If they're selling it for that cheap, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sure they're probably trying to clean the place out probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So All right. Nice. Well, we'll <laughs> go ahead and uh, yeah, I'm sure Robert will be, he'll watch this later and and it, he probably heard <laughs> you, but yeah, it's interesting. So, all right, well, we'll yeah. go start it again. Here okay. we go. All right, so words that start with dis, okay? Disable, disability, disadvantage, disaffirm, disagree, disagreement, disallow, disappear, disapproval, disarm, disassemble disassociate or disassociate, disavow, disband, disbelief, disclaim, disclaimer, discomfort, disconnect, discontinue, discontent, discredit, uh, disembark, disfran disenfranchise, disengage, disharmony, dishonest, dishonor, disinfect, disinherit, disinterested, dislike, dislocate, disloyal, disobedient, disobey, disorder, disorganized, disoriented, disown, displease, disqualify, disregard, disrespect, dissatisfy, dissimilar, distaste, distrust. All right. Now, here are some sentences using um, different briefs. I'm going to go down the line with the briefs, and then I'll give you the sentences. If you have any questions about any of the briefs, just let me know. Okay. Essential, eventual, examining room, 
industrial industry, or you can just write it out if you don't want to use the brief. Let the record reflect. May I approach? Uh-huh. Yep. I think I know those last four. <laughs> you um, starting with industrial, I think. Or sure. indus and yeah. So industrial is S-T-R long E-L, streal. Okay. Industry is stri, S-T-R long A, or I'm sorry, S-T-R long E. Mm -hmm. Let the record reflect is L-E-K-T. I love that one. Lect. That sounds a good one. Yeah. Here's my other favorite. May I approach? Mape. M long A P, MAPE, motion granted, M O G, motion denied. Now you're either going to write that as M O D or you're going to flag it so it doesn't conflict with mod. Mm -hmm. But I mean, how often does that come up? You know? Yeah, just as part of words sometimes though. Yeah, I put it in my dictionary as M O D, motion denied, and then if you to come up, I, I would flag it. So, but it's up to you. Now, anything with ologist, um, I don't have a sentence for this, but they just threw it in there. Anything with ologist is OLT. So, you know, you just come back with OLT. And then ology is OLG. So, you know, like radiology, you just do R long AD and then just come back for OLG for ology. So, oh, that's good. Yeah, it saves the stroke, at least one. Yeah. Um, operating room, ORM, po potential, P long O N L. Again, a lot of these I write out that don't come up all the time. Um, proceed, P R long E D, creed, procedural, P R long O R L. Yeah, I think I have proceed as PR long O. Okay. Okay. Yep. I know there's a couple ways to write that. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Proceeding. PR long O G. But some people do it as PR long E G. So mm -hmm. you may have a different way too. Here's a good one. Prudent person. P R U P. Recovery room, initial R, final RM. Refresh my recollection, R-I-R-K. Refreshed my recollection, you're just throwing in the D, R-I-R-K-D. Respondent, S-P long O-N-T. Responsibility is S-P-O-N-T. Search warrant, either S-W or S-W-A-R. So help you God, if they, you know, they say that, S-K-O-D, SCOD, Social Security, initial S, final S. Um, solemnly swear, S-O-L-S. -S. Now, if they say solemnly state, you can either write that as S-O-L-T or S-O-L-T-S. Um, something like that. That's another good one. I write it as SLAT, S L A T. They have it as S L long A K. To my knowledge, T O I J. To my recollection, T O I R K. To your recollection, T O U R K. To your knowledge, T O U R J. Under the circumstances, yes. Now, the rest of these I don't do, but if, if you don't know them and you want them, let me know. What is your full name? There's just so many different ways that they say that, you know? Yeah. Or just, what is your name? Oh, so, and then we have, what is your name? Do you want them just in case? Um, sure. Okay. So, what is your full name? Is W-H-A-U-F-M. What is your name? W H A U R M. What is your address? W H A U R D Z. What is your age? W H A U R J. What is your position? 
W-A-U-R-C-G-S, which they don't say that very often. <clears throat> and then here, yeah. what is your business? W-H-A-U-R-B-S. So, you know, maybe like, what is your name? What is your full name? What is your address? I can see them asking that, you know? Yeah. What is your age? So, okay, now here are your sentences, okay? Here we go. Okay. Water is essential for life. The eventual end of the war of the world is near. The doctor was in the examining room. It was industrial cleaner. Bob was the best in the industry. Let the record reflect, L-E-K-T, this statement was made. May I approach the bench, Your Honor? Motion granted, counsel. No, motion denied, counsel. Where is the operating room? Liz has the potential to be violent. You may proceed, counsel. Did you go to the cardiologist? I just threw that in there so you can practice it. So, ologist, O-L-T. I work in the radiology department. So, O-L-G for ology. Of course, you write the first part of those words. It is procedural to do this. The proceeding will take a while. Jen is a prudent person. He laid in the recovery room. Please refresh my recollection. Thank you. That refreshed my recollection. He is the respondent in this matter. The police needed a search warrant. Do you swear? So help you God. Do you solemnly state? that the testimony will be accurate. I do solemnly swear to tell the truth. Do you receive social security? It was something like that. To my knowledge, he was employed. To my recollection, he liked fruit. To your recollection, did he wear white? To your knowledge, was he related to the gang? Under the circumstances, we will leave. What is your full name? What is your name? What is your age? What is your address? What is your business name? What is your position at the company? All right. Now we're gonna do one more drill before we move on. This is going to be names and addresses with their spellings of the last name, okay? Here we go. Mr. Steve T. Sapenza, S-A-P-I-E-N-Z-A, -E 10 Garden Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 02138. Ms. Linda B. Sarlo, S A R L O, 3501 North Mulford Road, Rockford, Illinois, 61201. Ms. Karen O. Fernier, F O U R N I E R, 53 Waymouth Street, Brunswick, Maine, 04012. Dana F. Cox, C-O-X, P.O. Box 243, Livingston, Texas, 78351. Uh, Don I. Burless, B-U-R-L-E-S-S, -S, 2130 South Oakland Street, 
Arlington, Virginia, 22304. Nan M. Santiago, S-A-N-T-I-A-G-O, 51 South Newton Avenue, Selden, New York, 11784. Travis J. Archie, A-R-C-H-E-Y, Route 4, Box 258, Wilmington, Illinois, 60481. Mrs. Lucy I. Martinez, M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z, 840 Patricia Way, San Mateo, California, 94501. Faye M. Work, W-E-R-K, Calvin Christian High School, 3750. Ivan Rest Avenue, Grandville, Mississippi, 49418. All right. You know what I forgot to give you? I always pull so many drills. Um, I'm gonna give you real quick tangle tamers because it won't take long, okay? It's good practice. Here we go. Covered porches, sensitive statement, unusual friendships, paraplegic equipment, behavior modification, louvered draperies, sense and sensibility, terribly confusing, outpatient facilities, high profile, swayed precariously, um, illegal immigrants, fresh architecture, colorless environment, beleaguered correspondence, colorless environment, striking impression, foreign secretaries, home builder extraordinaire, and suburban campground. All right, now let's get started with our literary. This literary is an article and it's called Soul to the Young Man in the Blue Shorts. My watch, I'm gonna start at 120 and I'll work my way to 160, okay? Here we go. You'd be amazed at the stuff that turns up in a police department property room. Police recover things, then nobody claims them, or evidence is held and released. All sorts of things, cameras and iPads, TVs, iPods, tools and toolboxes and cell phones, just to name a few. And once a year, these unclaimed items are sold at auction. This year at the police auction in Kansas City, Missouri, there was a large number of bicycles. When the very first bicycle came up and the auctioneer asked who'd start the bidding, a youngster right down in the front said, $5. Tiny youngster, 10, maybe 12. I've got five. Will you give me 10, 10, who will bid 15? As the bidding continued, the auctioneer looked back at the young boy down in front. The boy did not respond. Later, another bicycle came up and again, the boy bid $5, but would go no higher. This went on through several bicycles. Each time the boy bid $5, never more. And $5 was not nearly enough. The bikes were selling for $135 or $140, and some even for more than $200. During a brief intermission, the auctioneer asked the boy 
why he had let some of those good bikes sell without bidding higher. The boy explained that $5 was all he had. Back to the auction. There were cameras and computers still to be sold and some more bicycles. On each bicycle, the boy bid $5. And on each, someone else bid much more. But now the assembled crowd is beginning to notice the boy who always opens the bidding. The crowd is beginning to recognize what is happening. After a tedious hour and a half, the auction is beginning to wind down. But there is still one bicycle left, and it is a nice one. A shiny, like new, let's see, looks like motor, oh, mountain bike, with thick wheels, dual position brake levers, stem shifters, and a light set. The auctioneer asks, do I hear a bid? And the young lad near the front, who by now has all but given up, quietly repeats $5. And the auctioneer stops his chant, just stops, stands there, and the audience sits silent. Not one hand is raised, not one voice calls out a second bid, until the auctioneer says, sold, to the young man in the blue shorts for $5 and the audience applauds, and a small boy's face lights up like one of the most beautiful sights you ever saw. As he trades the $5 scrunched up in his sweaty fist for what is surely the most beautiful bicycle in the world. I thought that was a neat article. Happy article. All right, let's do some jury. Actually, you know what? Um, I've got one more. This is a sheriff's department report that was read in court. So I'll read one page of this, okay? I'll read this at 160, because we didn't get to that. We, we only got about a paragraph um, of 160 in that last set, so there we go. I conducted an area check for Connor Reed in the surrounding area, but was unable to locate him. I interviewed Julie alone inside the kitchen area of the residence, and the following is what she told me. Julie has known Connor Reed for approximately 16 years. The two dated for about three months before they were married on 6-5-2012. Julie Reed said they did not have any children together. They live on the same property as her mother, Donna Dash, or excuse me, Dana Dash, in a separate house. Julie told me Reed, her husband, was angry at her because she had stayed with a friend the previous night. Julie said her friend was having health issues and needed help. On the morning of 7-29-2012, at approximately 6 p.m., Reed picked Julie up at her friend's residence. During the ride home, Reed was yelling at Julie because he felt she needed to ask permission to go anywhere. While Julie tried to explain her reasoning, Reed grabbed her by the hair and violently slammed the back of her head into the passenger side window, breaking the window. After arriving home, Julie and Reed continued to argue. During the argument while in their residence, Reed pushed Julie into the walls and objects in the room, such as the couch and coat rack. Julie told me she was afraid and did not know what to do except call for help. While attempting to yell for help, Reed pinned Julie to the wall. Julie told me her head and shoulders were pinned against the wall while her legs were pinned against the couch. Julie was unable to move or get away. At this time, Reed, with both hands, grabbed Julie's neck and squeezed. Julie told me Reed was squeezing so hard that she was unable to breathe at all. Reed continued to choke Julie for approximately one minute, still being pinned 
to the wall and couch. Julie was eventually able to lift her right leg, enough to force Reed away from her. After being pushed away, Reed re-engaged Julie and punched her in the right cheek eye area of her face with his left hand. Okay, there's more, but we'll stop there. Move into jury charge. All right, so this one, I will read this at 140, okay? Members of the jury, of course, the fact that I have given you instructions concerning the issue of plaintiff's damages should not be interpreted in any way as an indication that I believe that the plaintiff should or should not prevail. Your verdict must represent the considered judgment of each juror. In order to return a verdict, it is necessary that each juror agree thereto. In other words, your verdict must be unanimous. It is your duty as jurors to consult with one another and to deliberate with a view to reach an agreement if you can do so without violence to individual judgment. Each of you must decide the case for yourself, but only after an impartial consideration of all of the evidence in the case with your fellow jurors. In the course of your deliberations, do not hesitate to re-examine your own views and change your opinion if convinced it is erroneous, but do not surrender your honest conviction as to the weight or effect of the evidence solely because of the opinion of your fellow jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. Remember at all times you are not partisans. You are judges, judges of the facts. Your sole interest is to seek the truth from the evidence in the case. <clears throat> All right. Let's go into Q&A. Let's see. Okay. Now, I've got one, it's kind of like a drill. We're gonna start off with this. Um, it's that one page Q&A that doesn't really make sense and it, it takes you all over the place. So you don't even know what to expect the next question will be. So we're gonna do this and I'm going to read this at, um, I'll read this at one, I'll read this at 120, okay? All right, here we go. Did you ask for a glass of water? Yes, I did. Mr. Brown is very old. He has no teeth at all. Hurry up, please. Okay. Was this cube of ice melting? Yes, it was. Did she come in? No, she didn't. Do they sell any flowers in the supermarket? No, sir. You don't smoke, do you? No, ma'am. What an incredible piece of news. I know. Do you have to finish that delicious bowl of soup? Absolutely. I'm afraid there is no other way to say it. Oh no. The cat was hungry. Did you give her some milk? I couldn't. You had a plate of pasta? No, I never did. Sit down and open your folder, please. We have. Come in and sit down. Thank you. I met your English friends last week. What nice people they are. I know. You can eat a slice of cheese if you want. Okay, thank you. How nice to see you again. Where have you been for the last three months? I've been on a hiking trip. Shall we have lunch now? I'm not hungry. Never do that again. I won't. Don't go into that house. I know. They have no red socks in that store? What store? Did you have some sugar? I didn't have any. 
I like to spend the holidays in the valley. The place is so nice. It is boring. Let's not say a word. Why? Did you go to the beach that day? No, it was too cold. Are there any buses to the square? I don't know. Get the dog vaccinated as soon as possible. I don't have the money. Get out of the way. You get out of the way. Do you want a pen and paper? No, thank you. You aren't still hungry, are you? I'm stuffed. Do you have a glass of water? Where? You haven't been to London, have you? No, I have never traveled. So it doesn't always make sense, but I love it because it, you just, you know, you have to just go with the flow, not expect what the next question will be. All right. Let's do some regular Q and A. <clears throat> okay, this is the dog bite transcript. This is a good one to start out with because it tends to be a little on the <clears throat> easier side as far as the words go. Looks like defense is questioning. Here we go. And I'm going to start at 120, but I'll work my way to 160. Okay. Now you've landed with your left foot on the driveway and the dog's got your right leg. What's the next thing that you remember happening? A van pulled up and a van pulled up on the street and then the dog let go of me. Both of the dogs ran and got in the van and then the van went somewhere. Okay, was this right after your left foot came down on the driveway? No, it was about a couple, it was about five minutes later. Oh, okay, let's back up just a tad, all right? Now, you came down so that your foot, left foot, is on the driveway, and the dog has your right leg, right? Uh-huh. Remember to say yes or no, okay? We can't have you saying uh-huh or huh-uh because the court reporter can't get that down. Okay, now what's the next thing you remember happening? Trying to get him loose off my leg. Okay, you were trying to get what loose? The dog's mouth. Okay, how were you trying to do that? By shaking my leg like that. You were just shaking your right leg back and forth. Yeah. Were you saying anything? Yeah, saying let go. Were you yelling that out? No. When you came down on top, excuse me, when you came down on the driveway, do you know where Chad was? He was already, he was almost in the house. Do you know where Josh was? Yeah, across the, I mean, at the neighbor's, by the neighbor's house. Okay, did you say let go a whole bunch of times or one time? A whole bunch. Were you holding on to the fence with your hands? Yeah. Were you saying anything else besides let go? No. Okay, now you're holding on to the fence and your left foot is on the driveway and you're shaking your right leg, right? Uh-huh. And what happens next? The van pulls up and then the dogs got in. Okay, was the dog still biting you when the van drove up? Yeah. Can you describe the van for me? What did it look like? It was black. Was it a dark black or was it like a silver? No, black. Okay, do you know who was driving the van? 
No. Did you ever learn later? No. Who was the driver? No. Excuse me, counsel. Now, I want to remind you, you need to let him finish his question before you give your answer, okay? Okay. Did you hear someone in the van say anything? No. Do you know if the person in the van whistled or yelled for the dogs? No. Now, when you're holding onto the fence, you're standing with your left leg and the dog has your right leg. And I'm talking about the light brown dog with the dark brown spots. Where was the other dog? The white one. He was still barking at the other dogs. Was he still across the dirt road? Yes. Were you able to shake the dog off your leg? No. While you're shaking your leg, what is the dog doing? Just biting on, on my leg and growling. And are you saying anything to the dog? No. Did you yell for your mom or your stepdad to come help you? No, I was just screaming. Were you yelling anything? Well, maybe saying let go. Were you crying or anything? Yes. Did you have tears? Yes. Do you remember someone who lived down the street by the name of Gwen, a man whose name was Gwen? Counsel, I think it's Gwil. No. Do you know who Mr. Stahl is? No. He's the guy who had all the dogs down the street from you. Did you ever meet Mr. Stahl? No. What about his wife, Mrs. Stahl? Did you ever meet her? No. Did you just hold onto the fence and shake your leg there for a while? Yeah, I tried to climb back up the fence, but each time I did, the dog would bite harder on my leg. Are you able to tell me about how long that was? No. Did the dog ever let go just for a minute? No, he only got tighter on my leg. Did the white dog with the brown spots, I feel like that's a Dr. Seuss book, the white dog with the brown spots, ever come across the street and bite you? No. Did the white dog with the brown spots stay across the street the whole time until the van drove up? Yes. Could you tell who was in the van, a man or a woman? I don't know. But was the light brown dog with the dark brown spots still having his teeth around your leg when the van drove up? Yes. Do you know who was in that van? No. One person or a whole bunch of people? I don't know. Now, did the dogs go into the van or did they just go away? They went in the van. Somebody opened the door and then they jumped in. Which door did they open was opened up? The sliding door. On the side? Yeah. Do you know who opened that door? No. Was the door that opens on the side, was that on the driver's side or on the passenger's side? The driver's side. The driver's side? No, the passenger's side. And when the van stopped, was the passenger's side close to you or was it on the other side of the car? It was on the other side of the car. So when the dogs, when the light brown dog with the dark brown spots let go of you, it went around to the other side of the van? Yes. Was it down to Mr. Stahl's house where all the other dogs were? I don't know. Did you ever ride your bicycle down there? No. Did you ever walk down there? No. Earlier you said that you'd seen dogs there, right? Yeah. Okay, had you seen them when your folks drove you by in the car? No, I saw them when I was at my friend's house. 
how did you get to your friend's house? I just went across the street on the other side of the dirt road. And you looked down there? Yeah. Excuse me. Does anybody mind if we just take a short break? Unfortunately, the coffee has gotten to me. Sure, let's take a break. We'll switch transcripts. That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, go take a break, Adam. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's see, how are we doing on time? Yeah, we're doing okay. All right, I'll just read one more. Um, I'm going to read at 160, okay? This is the, um, the child abuse case. I know it's kind of hard sometimes to listen to this, but we have to be able to just write it and not focus on, you know, the details. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. We'll go ahead and start with the court. How do you know that? We've been through that. You said you didn't actually see it. You only assumed it. Do you have a different answer now? No. Your Honor, that has been asked and answered, though. Okay, sustained. I just want you to explain, as you're showing us, what your mom did. I don't think it was clear for the record what your mom did when you walked into the room and she was hiding something, as you said. She made a gesture. Can you please explain what your mom did? She hid it behind her back. You mean she took her arm and put it behind her back? Yes. You also said you saw smoke coming from her mouth? Yes. Did she say anything to you then? What do you mean? When you walked into the room and you saw that she put her arm behind her back, get out of the bedroom. Is that what your mom said to you? Yes. Is that when you saw smoke coming from her mouth? Yes. Was she alone in this room? Yes. The record should reflect that Mrs. Johnson has stepped out of the room. What did you do after your mom said, get out of the room? I just went back out and started crying. Why did you cry? because when she gets her dope, she goes across the street and my auntie tells me where she's going. What auntie is that? My auntie Candy, Darlene Watkins. That's not your caretaker, is it? No, she actually, she's actually your maternal aunt, right? Your mom's sister? Who, my auntie outside? Your auntie Candy. Darlene, that's my mom's sister, and your aunt, your Lisa Moss, is your paternal aunt, who is going to be your prospective adoptive mom? Yes. How many times did you go into your mom's room and witness her engaging in this type of behavior? A lot of times. Did you ever see her in any other room of the house or any part of the house? doing similar behavior. No, Mrs. Johnson is back in the courtroom. Does the court wish to inquire, maybe if it's something to do physically, if she's able to continue? Are you okay? I think she's okay. Did you ever ask your mom to please stop using drugs? No. Now, when you said you saw the pipe around three or four times, did you actually pick up the pipe and touch it? No. Did you ever smell the pipe or get a smell from the pipe? No. Leah, is everything you told us today the truth? Yes. I have no further questions. Ms. Kareem, can you estimate the time you might need? Only five or 10 minutes. All right, proceed. You said that your mother never hit you, is that correct? Just my brothers and sisters. You said she tried to hit you? Yes, she tried. Did she ever hit you? No, I would run. Do you recall when the little children and you were removed from your mother the last time, telling the social worker 
that your mother hit you and kicked you. What, say it again, did you tell the social worker that your mother hit you and kicked you? Yes. Why did you tell the social worker that? Because that was true. Because I wouldn't wash the dishes. You just got through saying that your mother didn't hit you. Yes, she didn't, but she would kick me. Like when my mother grabbed me, she would always kick me. Hit and kick are different things. Did she try to kick her or did she actually kick her? She did kick me. She did kick you? Did she hit you? No, she didn't hit me. She just kicked me. All right, do you recall telling the social worker that your mother hit you? No, I just said she kicked me. Do you recall telling the social worker that your mother hit you? No. The first time you were removed from your mother, in this case, you lived with your grandmother? No. Objection, Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. The other children lived with your grandmother, correct? Yes. And when you went back home with your mother, was your grandmother living in the house also? Yes. And was your grandmother also using drugs? Yes. And your aunt? My auntie Darlene? Yes. No. There were other people in the house also using drugs? My mom and her boyfriend. What about your Aunt Candy? No, she's never used drugs. Never in her life? Never. That's what she told you? That's what I know. You lived with her all of your life? Mostly. How old is she? She's 25. All right, so let's do some read back. So sad that mom had her kids pee in a pot so she could take the urine to the um, drug testing and pass the drug test. Can you believe that? Mom of the year award there. Okay, so um, this is going to be defense attorney. It's a continuation from uh, the readback we did yesterday, same transcript. And let's see, the court does come in. And the plaintiff comes in once as well, okay? All right. I'm going to read this one time at, I'll read it one time at 160, then at 140, and then again at 120, okay? Your Honor, I am asking if she recalls the statement on the radio. She can answer yes or no. The witness is instructed to answer the question, no, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez sitting in the patrol car with you? I don't really remember what his name was. Was that man in the squad car with you in uniform? No, ma'am, he was not. Was he in civilian clothes? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez telling you that you were under arrest for murder? No, I don't remember that. Your Honor, this assumes a fact that is not yet in evidence. Your Honor, it calls for a yes or no answer. Proceed, Mrs. Delaney. Mrs. Milbrook, do you recall being told by Deputy Perez at your residence after the shooting that you were under arrest? No, ma'am, I wasn't told I was under arrest. You don't recall being told that you were under arrest? No, ma'am, I don't recall that. Mrs. Milbrook, isn't your testimony that at that time you broke down and began crying and screaming at Deputy Perez? What would you do? I was upset. There were policemen all over the place. My hands were handcuffed behind my back. I was forced to lie down on the back seat of the squad car. I was crying. I don't recall making any statements. I did not believe that the gun had discharged. You have indicated in response to some questions presented by Mr. Phillips that you and Brent Knox left the house and went for a drive on this Sunday in question. Yes, ma'am. Could that have been Saturday? 
No, ma'am, it was Sunday. Are you positive it was Sunday? Yes, I am positive. Do you recall having a conversation with Brent Knox regarding some stocks and securities that your husband, Tony, planned to transfer to your name? I recall no such conversation with Brent. You never made that statement? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Sounds fishy. All right, so let's go ahead and do that again um, at 140. Here we go. Your Honor, I am asking if she recalls the statement on the radio. She can answer yes or no. The witness is instructed to answer the question. No, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez sitting in the patrol car with you? I don't really remember what his name was. Was that man in the squad car with you in uniform? No, ma'am, he was not. Was he in civilian clothes? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez telling you that you were under arrest for murder? No, I don't remember that. Your Honor, this assumes a fact that is not yet in evidence. Your Honor, it calls for a yes or no answer. Proceed, Mrs. Delaney. Mrs. Milbrook, do you recall being told by Deputy Perez at your residence after the shooting that you were under arrest. No, ma'am, I wasn't told I was under arrest. You don't recall being told that you were under arrest? No, ma'am, I don't recall that. Mrs. Millbrook, isn't your testimony that at that time you broke down and began crying and screaming at Deputy Perez? What would you do? I was upset. There were policemen all over the place. My hands were handcuffed behind my back. I was forced to lie down on the back seat of the squad car. I was crying. I don't recall making any statements. I did not believe that the gun had discharged. You have indicated in response to some questions presented by Mr. Phillips that you and Brent Knox left the house and went for a drive on this Sunday in question? Yes, ma'am. Could that have been Saturday? No, ma'am, it was Sunday. Are you positive it was Sunday? Yes, I am positive. Do you recall having a conversation with Brent Knox regarding some stocks and securities that your husband, Tony, planned to transfer to your name? I recall no such conversation with Brent. You never made that statement? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Okay, so we'll do that again at 120. <clears throat> Here we go. Your Honor, I am asking if she recalls the statement on the radio. She can answer yes or no. The witness is instructed to answer the question. No, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez sitting in the patrol car with you? I don't really remember what his name was. Was that man in the squad car with you in uniform? No, ma'am, he was not. Was he in civilian clothes? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Do you recall Deputy Perez telling you that you were under arrest for murder? No, I don't remember that. Your Honor, this assumes a fact that is not yet in evidence. Your Honor, it calls for a yes or no answer. Proceed, Mrs. Delaney. Mrs. Milbrook, do you recall being told <clears throat> by Deputy Perez at your residence after the shooting that you were under arrest? No, ma'am, I wasn't told I was under arrest. You don't recall being told that you were under arrest? No, ma'am, I don't recall that. 
Mrs. Millbrook, isn't your testimony that at that time you broke down and began crying and screaming at Deputy Perez? What would you do? I was upset. There were policemen all over the place. My hands were handcuffed behind my back. I was forced to lie down on the back seat of the squad car. I was crying. I don't recall making any statements. I did not believe that the gun had discharged. You have indicated in response to some questions presented by Mr. Phillips that you and Brent Knox left the house and went for a drive on this Sunday in question. Yes, ma'am. Could that have been Saturday? No, ma'am, it was Sunday. Are you positive it was Sunday? Yes, I am positive. Do you recall having a conversation with Brent Knox regarding some stocks and securities that your husband, Tony, planned to transfer to your name? I recall no such conversation with Brent. You never made that statement? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. All right. How was that? That was good. Should have gotten 180. <laughs> um, I got a question for that. Uh, the last question where it says um, your husband, Tony. Are yeah. there commas around Tony or no? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Yep. And um, you can, you know, and you can always test it out by saying, uh, reading it, and if it makes mm. sense by taking Tony out, then you know you have to surround it with commas. You can say, okay. uh, do you recall having a conversation with Brent Knox regarding some stocks and securities that your husband uh, planned to transfer to your name? Okay. So, yeah, it's just reiterating the person, but you can take it out, it makes sense, so then it's got to be encased with commas. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's yeah so awesome. great job now can, are you able to attend the high speeds tonight tonight no i can't tonight i have um church stuff on wednesday nights okay. no worries no worries well then uh, but, um friday we'll do the high speeds on friday morning yep right? yep nine cool. to ten friday morning high speeds sweet hopefully i'll be able to make it to that i should be able okay. to make it to that. if not you can always watch the recorded class you know cool but it's always better to have live Yep. I enjoy it. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks, Good to for, see you, Jill. thanks for being here live. <laughs> no problem. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.